Hello, hello, thanks for tuning in again. We always appreciate you joining us at MTD CNC. Today I'm with my buddy Alfredo. Believe it or not, he and I have been friends for about a decade now and he hasn't asked me to ride any horses with him, but that's okay. We'll get there one day, I promise. Today, we're talking technology and the great thing about our friends at Pro Technique are that they bring in some of the best technology from around the world. Japanese machines like the Sodic you see behind me, Taiwanese technology, some of the best in the world as well, and the list goes on and on. And I've known this for a long time now. It's been a, around a decade or so at this point, Alfredo, hasn't it? Almost. Yeah. Yes. So it's really good to see you again. Thank Let's you. get into the technology because I know the audience gets real bored of my animated over talking and they like to learn about technology. Yeah. So we're here in Mexico today and we're at Expo Manufacturer, a great booth, I might say. It's tough to even walk through here. You have so many customers. Yes. So let's talk to the Mexican audience, firstly about Sodic and EDM. Yes, well, Sodic is a Japanese brand, the highest, I would say, in technology and in, in wire and penetration. Uh, their biggest difference, they have linear drives on all the axes. Uh, they use ceramics. Uh, we rotate wire. We do all that technology that it's... Uh, only in the world. Uh, they give a 10-year positioning warranty because of the technology, and Sodic is unique on that. Uh, and Mexico is investing a lot in EDM today because of all the precision parts that are coming to Mexico. So it's, it's uh, we've had a very much and good success with Sodic. Yeah, Sodic EDMs uh, kind of lead the industry. They're certainly a standard in the industry. EDM machines themselves with the harder material, the set it and forget it, those small tight angles where you have to make sharp cuts that some of the, the uh, regular milling machines might not be able to do. So Sodic is that, EDM is that. And there's different parts of, of EDM with a you know a 10 thou brass wire and all that stuff. But we'll let the audience go Google that a little bit later. Yes. Let's move on to the technology of what's actually right behind us because I want to talk Taiwanese and we'll bounce back over to Japanese. It looks like you're machining some really hard steel here. I mean, the chips are gorgeous. Can we talk a little bit about Axile and this ta uh, Taiwanese technology? Yes, this is a regular three axis machining center, but it's uh, set up for die mold. We br bring it with glass scales, absolute glass, glass scales from high and high. It's got a Siemens motor. Uh, it's right now it's machining a 58 Rockwell 4140, uh, taking a 10,000 uh, depth of cut on, on feet is with, uh, uh, with that usually it's, it's hard to get to the material with a normal machine. So it's a, also a high nine control as a standard. It is very important. The control is very important for the processing of molds. Alfredo, I don't like to throw people under the bus, but sometimes I have to ask certain questions. Sure. I know the answer to this question, but it's important to highlight as well. Sometimes when people in our industry think of Taiwanese technology, they think, well, Taiwanese technology maybe can't, doesn't have the rigidity or the strength or the years lasting to cut something hard like this. I personally know that's not true because I've worked with Exile. It's obviously why you're demoing hard steel as well. Correct. But our industry stereotype goes Taiwanese, I can't cut hard material. But you find that to be untrue here with the Exile, don't you? Yes, correct, because right now the Taiwanese in uh, vertical machining centers and standard machining centers is, is uh, number one. There's nobody in the world that can compete against them in castings and technology. Technologies, you can get a high line control anywhere in the world now, Siemens control, and uh, the guideways, roller guideways from Japan for all the world, they, they have all that. They, they can use it as a standard. So it doesn't matter where in the world it's made, it's the technology behind it that makes a difference. And, and the Taiwanese have all that. Let's slide over to Japan from Taiwan. Let's do a little Egyptian walk as we do this as well. That's always fun for me to be a little bit silly on camera. As we slide from Taiwan to Japan, I'm also very familiar with Sugami. Great friends of mine, so shout out to you guys. This is the Swiss world though. So a lot of times we're turning smaller parts very fast through the night with accuracy and precision. And the way Swiss makes money is to be able to do that nonstop 24 seven. Can we talk about Sugami? Yes, for us, Sugami is, is a great aspect. Uh, obviously, in Mexico, there's a lot more Swiss type parts coming down. And Sugami, I think it's leader in the world in what is Swiss. Uh, this is a general machining center for job shops. But from here, it's, it's uh, uh, this machine costs around $130,000. Very basic that every job shop should have one of these. Plus, you have the high end Sugamis for high production, like he says. And I, Sugami is number is leader in the world for that. There's no comparison. 
So we've done Japan EDM, we've gone into Taiwanese exile, we've moved over back to Japan on the Sugami machine, and I was thinking to end the interview, but out of the corner of my little eye, I spied another machine over here, which is kind of off on its own. Is there something special about that machine? Yes, Can we go let, take let, a let's look? Let's go look at her and go over that. So as we walk over here, Alfredo, what's special about this machine? Why is it sitting alone over here, which seems to be in the main part of the booth? Yes, well, uh, first of all, it's a five action machining center. Uh, this is a very high-end five-axis machinery center. Conceptually, the way it's constructed is a gantry-type construction. The control and everything else is German technology. The spindle, the table, and it's Torx Motors technology. Not everybody introduces it as a standard. Axel offers everything standard. Torx Motors, glass scales. It's got thermal compensation. It's got 32 sensors in the casting to compensate live. Uh, and this, so when you're not having a controlled temperature in your, in your environment, this will help you out a lot. This is all standard for, for Axel, it's not an option. Usually all five axes add this as optional. We, we offer a standard, it's a very high-end machine center in the aerospace, time mold industry, top-end equipment. Can That's I buy five of them? them? Maybe, if Maybe. you get time, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that. <laughs> All right, Alfredo, last question I have for you. We'll let the audience go after this. You have a pretty special event that comes every May. You've been doing this for a few years. I believe there was about 150 people listening to you at the last one, and you have it coming again this year. Can we discuss this event a little bit? Yes, correct. Every May, I'm trying to put an event. Uh, it's a technical seminar that will help my industry. It's not based on protecting. It's based more on technology that exists in the world that I want more people to hear about it and, and, and so we can invest in technology for Mexico and for, for all the customers that are growing. I think Mexico has got a great future in, in uh, machine tool uh, investments. Uh, I think it, it, it's, it's a great aspect that's only going to get bigger because of the U.S. I think in, the U.S. is investing a lot more in metal cutting in Mexico and not only, uh, I think we should have job shops that are more prepared for the future and that's, that's the whole purpose of that event. It's every May. We hopefully you guys can come, and uh, we'll uh, demo and we'll have a lot of live uh, equipment that, that we, we can go through during, during the event. And just let me back up, Alfredo, by saying that I absolutely agree. We saw some real complications over COVID in the last few years with those two giant oceans on either side of the U.S. And we are reshoring and we are nearshoring because right. as much as we want to do in the U.S., we can't do it all. And the same rules and regulations that apply in the U.S. apply in Mexico and Canada as well instead of some of the other places in the world. So for the Mexican people out there, invest in these machines because U.S. is reshoring and we are nearshoring. Alfredo, I hope we're friends Thank for you. another 10 years and longer, my friend. Thank you all for watching. <laughs>